Greetings, Earthlings! When I started doing these deck tech videos last year, I wanted to make a point to highlight some off-kilter builds and synergies that aren't commonly seen, but can really raise some eyebrows at a table. Now let me preface this video by saying that I built this deck to utilize a mechanic that has not only not been seen in the game since 97, but many people to this day have split opinions about due to its complexity. But first, let me introduce you to my boy, Odric, Master Tactician. For 2 and 2 white, we have ourselves a 3-4 human soldier with first strike, and the ability that, whenever Odric and at least 3 other creatures attack, you choose with which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block. Now let's jump into this mess of a deck, and I'll see you on the other side. Now let's hop right into the cesspool and break open the fact that this deck is built around the mechanic known as banding. If you're already familiar with the ability, this should be a treat, but if you're not, banding is a mechanic introduced way back in alpha with cards like Benelish Hero and Helm of Chatsook, and has, and will likely never see a reprint. As a last, last official set to have printed it as a keyword was Weatherlight with cards like Benelish Infantry and Volunteer Reserves. In short, and I'll probably make a separate rules video to this because it's a very, it's a very complex ability that doesn't really get any simpler as you understand it, but whatever. So, banding affects how combat damage is dealt and received. Any amount of creatures with banding may form a band with one creature without banding. And if the attacking band is blocked, the active player, being you, assigns how blockers deal the damage and where that damage goes. If you block as a band, you choose where the attacking creature's damage goes, etc, etc. What makes the mechanic a lot better than it's given credit for is if your band blocks a creature with trample, you can assign all the trample damage to one creature and it doesn't trample over. If you want a more detailed video on the rules of banding, I'll leave a link in the description, but for now, let's get into the deck itself. Now off the bat, let's note that Odric's ability synergizes insanely well with banding, because no band is complete without its lead singer. I feel like there should be a band name like Abandoned Soldiers or White Pat. <laughs> anyway, because you can force blocks, you can make something huge block a 0 1 while the rest of your field bashes through. Or you can just have them not block at all. Screw it. Now, unfortunately, combat can be a sticky scenario where you could be against some big creatures or you may not always have Odric on the field. But that's why I run a good amount of Pillow 40 type of effects and abilities like Deathblade Elite, Inviolability, Beloved Shaplane, and Unbreakable Formation. Because of the fact that you can sway combat in your favor, you want to be able to force blocks even if your opponents tap their field down to prevent it. That's why I run cards like Jangling Automaton, Lowland Tracker, and the aforementioned Deathblade Elite to untap your opponent's creatures and force them to block. Got a huge creature that requires a lot to take down? Here's where flanking comes in handy. Cards like Gust Cloak Cavalier, Pentarch Paladin, and Riftmark Knight can help whittle down blocking creatures and give your field extra advantages. Want to just wipe your opponent's board during combat? Play Abu Jafar and just nuke all of their creatures that are forced to block it. Now unfortunately, humans can only benefit, benefit each other so much, so they sometimes want help from their blessed angels. Cards like Herald of War, Aegis Angel, and Angel of Glory's Rise can cheapen, protect, and revive your fallen soldiers to bring them back into battle. But let's get to our main point, and that's our banding section. In total, I run about 22 cards that either have banding, grant it, or care about it. Some notable mentioned are the original Benelish Hero, Urza's Engine, and War Elephant. Also, Camel. Because yes, Camel. Some of the more notable cards are Helma Chatzuk and Batana Morale that can grant banding to help you make your army even bigger. The fact that we need to attack with at least three other creatures to activate Odric is a great excuse to run cards like Call the Copper Coats, Oketra's Monument, and Errand of Duty. Need even more of an excuse to redirect damage? Run Stuffy Doll and just make your opponents pay for even thinking they could have, they could have big dumb creatures. What? Not enough banding? <laughs> Alright, fine. <gasps> Let's have cards like Cooperation, Pikeman, Noble Elephant, Keldoran Sky Knight, Ekatian Skirmishers, and a really niche one known as Battering Ram. Need a slower blow-up creature? Run Basalt Golem. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> if I keep going, then you won't have any excuse to click the Moxfield link in the description to check the deck out for yourselves. So with that, and this maybe 4-5 to five power deck, 
you can have some fun with it. If you understand the ability enough, you can really have fun with it and you can really screw with your opponents. It's a really niche and fun deck. There are other things that I plan to include in this deck at a later point, but I'll worry about another time. Like, Odric Lunark Marshall would be a really good one because you can give certain keywords to the rest of your field, but I currently don't own him, but he is also a really good addition to a deck like this. So, with all that out of the way, and without further ado, I bid you all farewell.